And I, honestly, friends, I'm here to tell you that I blame myself first. Should have done my homework. Should have realized the lies before I participated in them. So this symbolic act, this throwing of the medal, is for all those people out there who are wondering why we're doing it. Do your homework. Hello, it's a grueling day. This is Mark Anderson, roving editor for American Free Press, here downtown Chicago, May 20 to 12 during the heart of the summit of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, which some protesters are calling the North Atlantic Terrorist Organization. NATO is the military arm of the, of the corporations, of the, of the banks, of the whole economic system. And it's the means by which they can declare wars out for resources and, you know, basically for resource extraction um, and for oppression of, of people and cheap labor markets. And they, they, so they can destabilize the world without populations having a vote, having a say in it. Because most of the people, in, you know, in the countries that are involved um, are, don't want to have war but we're able to say, hey, this is a NATO decision. NATO's job is, at this point in time, is to open up uh, oil and other resources to uh, Western powers, to uh, Western Europe, and to North American uh, governments. We've spent four to five trillion dollars on these wars, essentially for oil and for uh, resources in U.S. markets, and it hasn't made us more secure. The United States is 75% of NATO financially, but it is the whole of NATO in terms of its dominance and its direction of what NATO does as, a, as the most effective military alliance in world history, as they like to call themselves. We've been told by the federal authorities in the city that if we don't leave that place, which is not within sight and sound, at promptly the right time, we will be arrested. That is the character and the class of the jackboot state that NATO brings to the countries it invades every single day and they are deploying it right here on the streets of Chicago. There's a huge amount of protesters here from organizations local and across the country, easily upwards of three or four thousand. And as we speak in the late afternoon, Iraq Veterans Against the War and Veterans for Peace are leading a anticipated march roughly in the direction of McCormick Place where the NATO leaders and top brass is meeting to ceremoniously return their medals to NATO brass as these soldiers are protesting against what they consider the terrorist and killing campaigns under the aegis and hegemony of NATO. American Free Press just came out with an article about this, People Unite Against War, and it mentions this march to return the medals. The Bush administration knew that Saddam did not have weapons of mass destruction, but still railroaded the military and the American public into thinking that he did. So once I realized that, I deserted before we went over to Iraq. You, you heard the press conference today, 3,000 people died in the towers and that was tragic. 33,000 civilians in Afghanistan. And where's the accountability to that? It's not equal. It's why, why is it that the people who die in the United States have so much more value than the people of Afghanistan? I've learned um, that you can't, you can't fight terror with violence. They're one and the same. I don't believe in war as an instrument of solving problems anymore. And I'm here to pro NATO, protest NATO for that very reason. Uh, NATO has become essentially the military arm of the Western uh, nations, and it, it, we, we are not engaging in things that are actually developing in positive outcomes. So it, it doesn't make sense to, to continue to, to have a, a, a military alliance that's doing more harm than good. Because we the people are supposed to run this country, but instead it's all run by and for the few. Because now we know that the rich do not pay taxes But when they need a hand, it's us who bail them out Because we suspected we lived in a plutocracy But suddenly, of late, there is no doubt So we're gonna stay right here We're gonna stay right here now this morning, listening to the other side, I attended the Chicago Council on Global Affairs meeting and the Polish Foreign Affairs Minister Radislaw Sikorski spoke, outlining what much of what NATO is talking about today behind closed sealed doors at McCormick Place. The main things are Afghanistan policy, missile defense, and eastward expansion of NATO to absorb New Zealand, Australia, and contain China. New Zealand, Australia would become partners or eventual NATO members, and that would go hand-in-hand -hand with the Trans-Pacific Partnership, another 
uh, Pacific Union huge free trade bloc that further impoverishes the nations, according to the most respected analysts and articles in AFP over the years. But this is rather tense and dramatic moments going on here as Aaron Hughes of Iraq Veterans Against the War leads this march, going uh, back and forth across the front of the row before they left, much like William Wallace did as before his Scottish troops fought the British. Uh, very reminiscent of that. He's, he's leading peace troops, you might say. He's marshalling their morale. He's preparing them for what could happen in the form of uh, state police with large clubs right behind me, city police. I'm told the city police allotment alone is three or four thousand above the normal and easily in most respects and in most places you see people gathering the police officers equal or outnumber the protesters. But going into more details momentarily about NATO which confuses self-defense of its member nations with actual control of the peoples of its member nations. Uh, it disguises its hegemony and, and increasing global control under the aegis of collective defense, which sounds innocuous. But this is the great design and great deception that many of the protesters at the downtown park here at uh, the Perillo Banshell spoke about the, the, what they consider the false dichotomies, the hypocrisy of NATO. They see it as a aggressive organization having departed from its former mission of defending against Soviet aggression, defending Europe. The NATO agenda in more depth uh, contains some lies and distortions. One of the big things is they keep repeating the mantra that's in the press and coming from the lips of Barack Obama that troops are departing Afghanistan in 2014. Nothing could be further from the truth according to former U.S. Ambassador to Afghanistan Ron Newman who in February at a meeting I attended told the Foreign Policy Association we will not be leaving Afghanistan before 2016 militarily or administratively. And Barack Obama just said on TV a couple of weeks ago um, that we're going to have a presence in Afghanistan until 2024. And when you consider the private troops, the former Blackwater troops, those kind of boots on the ground, NATO is being very ambiguous about the kind of military presence we'll maintain in Afghanistan after 2014. But the distortions are apparent. They're not being specific like they should be about how long this trillion dollar a year North Atlantic Treaty Organization is going to keep our troops there embedded in these ongoing endless conflicts where winning can't be defined much much less achieved so it's a huge issue here this is a, a real turning point for the peace movement as they see it to challenge NATO hegemony to defeat that kind of new world orderism that kind of uh, all engulfing militaristic overlord that disguises its offensive and surveillance activities purely as defense as if NATO were about its uh, original mission which it's not so American Free Press is tracking all the news, chronicling all this, uh, pointing out all the distortions and lies of the Obama administration, which came under hard fire today, according to the speakers at the park, equally on par with the criticism of the Bush administrations, going all the way back to the war policies of LBJ and Nixon and other presidents as well. So right now we're waiting. By the time you see this, much of this will be past tense, but here on May 20th, police are waiting for the Iraq veterans against the war to come out and to see just how close they'll get or be allowed to get to McCormick's uh, McCormick place where the uh, pampered uh, leaders and top brass are meeting and there's a lot of censorship too I put out articles of AFP copies in a local coffee shop as soon as I turned around they were taken and thrown away by Secret Service they don't want any part of free speech or free exchange of information that says a great deal about this overall meeting and to add a little commentary, I do believe the NATO organization, having been founded under the UN Charter, is, is an obsolete dinosaur, much like the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms and Explosives, which is an old Prohibition Days relic. They both should go the way of the Edsel, as the old saying goes, and be defunded and abolished, and nations should return to principled self-defense, protect their own borders, look out for their own, look out for their people, look out for their economics. And that would address a lot of the concerns here today about foreclosures and economic warfare and economic downturns and the need for monetary reform and getting rid of the debts and the private central bankers and all of that. So it's beyond just militaristic war.
what the natives done to me. Mama, mama, can't you see? Mama, mama, can't you see? What the natives done to me? My name is Vince Emanuele, and I served with the United States Marine Corps. First and foremost, this is for the people of Iraq and Afghanistan. Second of all, this is for our real forefathers. I'm talking about the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. I'm talking about the Black Panthers. I'm talking about the Civil Rights Movement. I'm talking about unions. I'm talking about our socialist brothers and sisters, our communist brothers and sisters, our anarchist brothers and sisters, and our ecology brothers and sisters. That's who our real forefathers are. And lastly, and lastly, and most importantly, our enemies are not 7,000 miles from home. They sit in boardrooms. They are CEOs. They are bankers. They are hedge fund managers. They do not live 7,000 miles from home. Our enemies are right here, and we look at them every day. They are not the men and women who are standing on this police line. They are the millionaires and billionaires who control this planet, and we've had enough of it. So they can take their medals back. My name's Scott Kimball. Yeah, I'm an Iraq War vet. And I'm turning in these medals today for the people of Afghanistan, Iraq, Palestine, and all victims of occupation across the world. And also, for all the service members and veterans who are against these wars, you are not alone! My name is Christopher May. Uh, I left the Army as a conscientious objector. Uh, we were told that these medals represented, uh, you know, democracy and justice and uh, hope and change for the world. These medals represent a failure on behalf of the leaders of NATO. I will not be a part of that anymore. These medals don't mean anything to me, and they can have them back. My name's Maggie Martin. I was a sergeant in the Army. I did two tours in Iraq. No amount of medals, ribbons, or flags can cover the amount of human suffering caused by these wars. Yes. We don't want this garbage. We want our human rights. We want our right to heal. Yes. My name is Mark Strudis. I'm from Chesterton, Indiana. I just wanted to say thank you for being understanding, inviting, and wonderful. Even these guys in black and blue. It's a good conduct medal. <laughs> I'm giving these back. Free Bradley Manning. My name is Jason Hurd. I spent 10 years in the United States Army as a combat medic. I deployed to Baghdad in 2004. I'm here to return my Global War on Terrorism Service Medal in solidarity with the people of Iraq and the people of Afghanistan. I am deeply sorry for the destruction that we have caused in those countries and around the globe. I am proud to stand on this stage with my fellow veterans and my Afghan sisters. These were lies. I'm yes. giving them back. Chris Moger, I was part of the invasion of Iraq in 2003. And out of love and respect, out of the Iraqi people and the people of Afghanistan, I'm going to return these representations of hate and destruction back where they came from. My name is Jacob Flom. I was in the Air Force from 03 to 07. And it's, I joined the military so I could pay to go to college because it's the working, working class who fights the ruling class's wars. So right. But I'm not fighting for imperialism anymore. I'm fighting against imperialism. And this is dedicated, this is dedicated to all the courageous people who are under attack by the FBI, Carlos Montes and the anti-war 23. My name's Raymond Knabel. And I'm here to return my medals. NATO, the USA government, and Israel need to be held accountable for the war crimes, genocide, torture, and drone attacks. And they can have them. 
My name is Stephen Lund. I'm a two-time Iraq combat veteran. This medal I'm dedicating to the children of Iraq that no longer have fathers and mothers. Yeah. My name is Sean and I was a nuclear biological chemical specialist for a war that didn't have any weapons of mass destruction. Yeah. My name is Steve Atchison. I'm from Campbellsport, Wisconsin. I was a forward observer in the United States Army for just under five years. I deployed to Sadr City, Iraq in 2005. And I'm giving back my medals for the children of Iraq and Afghanistan. May they be, they be able to forgive us for what we've done to them. May we begin to heal and may we, may we live in peace from here until eternity. And the reason why I'm throwing my medal back is because we are the global 99% and we refuse to be silenced from Egypt back here to Chicago. Hello, my name is Michael Thurman. I was a conscientious objector from the United States Air Force. I'm returning my Global War on Terrorism medal and my military coins on behalf of Private First Class Bradley Manning. Yeah! 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 Free Bradley Manning! To show us the truth about these wars. Yeah! Yeah! Free Bradley Manning! 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 My name is Mike I'm from Columbus, Ohio. I now reside in the beautiful city of Chicago, Illinois, that today is not quite as beautiful because NATO is here. Yeah! And I'm here to return my medals because I cannot stand in solidarity and peace with my brothers and sisters in Iraq and Afghanistan as long as I wear them. My name is Matt Southworth. I served in the U.S. Army in 2004 in Iraq. I'm returning my medals today because under the guise of freedom and democracy, I stole the humanity of the Iraqi people and lost mine. We are on the right side of history. My name is Rachel McNeil. I served in the military for almost eight years as a sergeant. And I'm returning this medal today because it's time to restore America's honor and renounce this war on terror. My name is Jacob George. I'm from the Washita Mountains in Arkansas. I'm a three-tour veteran of the Afghan War, paratrooper and sergeant, and I have one word for this global war on terrorism decoration, and that is shame. My name is Scott Olson. I am with me today. Today I would make my global war on terror medal, Operation Iraqi Freedom Medal, National Defense Medal, and Marine Corps Good Conduct Medal. These medals, once upon a time, made me feel good about what I was doing. They made me feel like I was doing the right thing. And I came back to reality, and I don't want these anymore. I'm Joshua, I'm a member of IBAW, and I'm from Chicago. And I, honestly, friends, I'm here to tell you that I blame myself first. Should have done my homework. Should have realized the lies before I participated in them. So this symbolic act, this throwing of the medal, is for all those people out there who are wondering why we're doing it. Do your homework. My name is Richard Stroder, and I'm from Auburn, Alabama, and I'm here to say that war is a rocket! And I'm throwing this back and invoking my right to heal. My name is Michael Applegate. I was in the United States Navy from 1998 to 2006. And I'm returning my medal today because I want to live by my conscience rather than being a prisoner of it. My name is Nate. I served in the U.S. Navy from 99 to 2003 and participated in the invasions of Iraq and Afghanistan. I was wrong to uh, sign myself up for that. 
I apologize to the Iraqi and Afghani people for destroying your countries. My name is Joshua Shepard. I spent six years in the United States Navy. These are not mine. They never were. They're instruments of control from this government. I will not continue to trade my humanity for false heroism. My name is John Anderson. I did two deployments to Iraq. And all of this destruction was not necessary. And now we will bring it to an end because another world is possible. We are unstoppable. Another world is possible. We are unstoppable. Another world is possible. We are unstoppable. Another world is possible. I'm Greg Clemner. I'm an Army veteran. I spent a good amount of time in Afghanistan, and I just want everybody to look around. Take a second and look around. Look next to you right now. I'm talking to the police officers. I'm talking about everybody out here. There are thousands of people out here for something important. We're hearing, we're having a conversation for the first time in a long time. For many of us, for the first time. And I want to say that all of us, in some way or another, are trying to serve this great land that we live in. But it's only great because of what we do with it. And sometimes we make mistakes. And the way we change that is we admit our mistakes and we take responsibility for our mistakes. And we change and we become better and we do it together. So I'm returning my Global War on Terrorism medal because I don't fight wars on adjectives. My name is Aaron Hughes. I served in the Illinois Army National Guard from 2000 to 2006. This medal right here, it's for Anthony Wagner. He died last year. This medal right here, it's for the one third of the women in the military that are sexually assaulted by their peers. We talk about standing up for our sisters. We talk about standing up for our sisters in Afghanistan and we came to take care of our sisters here. This medal right here, because I'm sorry. I'm sorry to all of you. Look, it's I'm sorry. Winding up a grueling afternoon here, May 22 12, as the NATO summit over in McCormick Place, as they carry out their policy platitudes and their dry calculations for commandeering the world through their warfare state. And the march today of the Iraq Veterans Against the War, Veterans for Peace, and Afghans for Peace went several miles from the park at Petrillo Banshell down to the south near Cermak. But as things went along, very eloquent speeches were given by Iraq Veterans Against the War members who ceremoniously, as promised, turned in their medals, basically ridding themselves of all the adornments of war that they got fighting on tours in Iraq and Afghanistan. And while they did that today, they gave eloquent speeches. There was a moment of silence. It brought tears to many eyes. It was difficult to hold the tears back. And police in riot gear, thousands of them easily numbering, if not outnumbering, the protesters watched. They didn't really act. Overall, it was a very peaceful protest, but many feel that as 5 p.m. approached local time, the First Amendment rights were abridged. Police brought in uh, sound disbursement gear, water hoses. I'm sure they had rubber bullets, uh, all the bells and whistles to disperse the crowd. They made an announcement. People were very angry, and they're, they're screaming for their First Amendment rights. Legal observers from the ACLU saying that the event was permitted till maybe 4.30, 5 o'clock, but people are saying, how can you permit the First Amendment? How absurd is that? So while NATO, according to the Council on Global Affairs meeting here in Chicago this morning, uh, announcing their agenda, while they talk about Russia and how to counter Russia and all their moving the chess man across the board moves around the world as they put the world in their worldwide web of militarism, while they deliberate, the people are screaming, uh, no to NATO. They want an end to militarism. They want human rights restored, the First Amendment protected and restored, not needing permits. And they want a future free from war. And that's uh, also according to 
at least 30, 40 veterans that spoke out and handed in their medals today uh, ceremoniously back to NATO generals, as they put it. So that's how it's went today. Many feel the First Amendment is in peril. Overall, there were no major arrests. There were 18 arrests yesterday on the uh, Saturday of this event for miscellaneous. Three held on terror charges, but they seem trumped up at this point. But that's the news here uh, of this summit as it winds up and coming to you from Chicago and look into the future toward a world with less militarism and American sovereignty restored, constitutional rights restored, and an end to the collective security of NATO that is really a collective prison. We'll see you next time. So, Mr. Camp, what what uh, <laughs> what did you think of the events today? Did you see the uh, Iraq vets throw there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was uh, phenomenally moving. It really was, and it, it you know th these are people that that have their lives have been changed, and they went over there thinking they were doing something to serve the country, and then they realize the truth that it's it's all meaningless and war is <laughs> never right and uh, or just about never right and and it's it's disgusting people's lives are destroyed so they came here to throw their medals back at the back at NATO who supports these wars and and uh, and and really make a point and I thought it was incredibly moving and what do you think of Chicago turnout I think the turnout's pretty good I mean people came from all over and you know 10,000 or so and and the turnout's been good people have all age, race, color, and creed, and I, I, it's been really great to see it, yeah. And, and, and why don't you support NATO? Why don't I support NATO? Because they support every one of these illegal wars that we find ourselves in, the, you know, b war for wealth over, uh, you know, over average citizens. It's, it, it's all about wealth. It's all about oil, and, and it, people's lives are destroyed, and these, these drones drop bombs, and we don't even know who they, who's, who they destroy. It's just, it's just meaningless dots on a computer to, to, to the people that are making these calls, and that's not the way any, any, any species should ever, ever behave. So. Did you hear about some of the people that are flying those drones? What, what about them? 21-year-olds in Las Vegas. Oh, yeah, Las they go out on the strip yeah, yeah. After, after they bomb. And they're in the offices, and there was one report that showed what they're looking at on a computer screen, and it's black and grainy black and white footage, the little speck, oh, that's a terrorist, and they drop a bomb and destroy a life, destroy many lives. Making friends. Yeah, yeah. And uh, once they're underground. <laughs> it's insane, and uh, as we were just talking about, there's supposed, there's apparently 3,000 police officers, which we're now being surrounded by, and you know that's for 10,000 protesters. So you need really, you need one third the number of protesters in cops out here. Like it's insane. Thanks. And where, where'd you come from? Well, I was at. I performed a recall walk or benefit show last night. Uh, looks like we got to get out of here. Uh, but I came from New York City right. because it has been demonstrated. Out of that the winners are the ones who stick around Because this world should belong to everyone Not just the banksters who would smash it to the ground Because we notice voting doesn't change things But the politicians are mostly millionaires Because we're learning how to stand up like Tunisians Like they did in Tahrir Square Where a young man named Mohammed who was easy Struck a match that lit up all the earth and all around the world the spell was broken and the movement for the future was in birth because there's only so much shit the rich can feed us before we figure out which side we're on because we've learned if we want our liberation it will only come if we stay here till the rising of the dawn so we're gonna stay right